Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today, we'll talk about selection and qualification of the monitors. More after the break. In Europe, academics are often used for monitoring because they are expected to work in a solution-oriented manner. In America, on the other hand, CRA without an academic degree are more likely to be hired. Both can have their advantages and disadvantages. It is important that the person responsible for the project is aware of this because this can have an impact on the course of the study. It is also the case that the monitoring approach differs in these two continents. In the USA, the project manager of the sponsor, or the CRO, who has an overview of the monitoring activities, must put an effort to control the monitors and continuously give instructions. European monitors are expected to bring a lot of initiative to work independently and in a solution-oriented manner. The GCP guideline stipulates that the sponsor is responsible for selecting the monitors for a clinical trial, and some sponsors really do that. There are sponsors who receive CV and then carry out interviews with certain candidates. The interviews contain test questions to identify the qualification. Tricky situations are simulated in which the monitors can show whether they know standard tools or have certain soft skills for solving problems. There are also other sponsors who do not care much about the choice of monitors. They trust the CRO and the CRA who is employed there. In addition, there are also sponsors who only select monitoring based on the cost and thus assign this important task to the company that makes the cheapest offer. From a sponsor's quality assurance perspective, only the first mentioned process should be the right one. The second group doesn't notice the level of responsibility they have when it comes to setting the right monitors. This is where the so-called oversight of a study begins. This attitude at the beginning of the study is often criticized by the inspectors and is named as a lack of oversight, which in other words means they have no overview of their study because they do not know who, with what qualifications, hard and soft skills is monitoring their study. A lack of understanding of the importance of clinical monitoring in a study can easily lead to a misunderstanding of its importance in terms of monitors' qualifications. Many sponsors expect monitors to have one to three years of experience before they can monitor certain studies. However, the qualification should be a decisive factor and it must be well documented. Moreover, this is also established in the GCP guidelines that every monitor has to keep a CV meaningful and up-to-date. CV with private content, poor structure and formatting or outdated data can give an idea of how the monitor will do the job. The curriculum vitae is a monitor's flagship, so to say. The more meaningful it is, the more interesting and complex studies can be monitored. Therefore, the CV should always contain an up-to-date list of the study experience, so one can immediately see whether the monitor has monitored simple studies or complex projects. It is similar with the training record. Training activities must also be demonstrated by a monitor. Not every aspect of monitoring can be learned through learning by doing, such as changes in legislation. You or your employers invest a lot of time and money in your training, and therefore it should pay off. It is even more important that you document them. In the event of an inspection by the authorities, the CV, including further training certificates, are checked very closely. Topics that cannot be easily read or cannot be trained externally usually require training by the sponsor, for example, an innovative new therapy, rare diseases, or knowledge about a certain product. The sponsor has the relevant core competence, and nobody knows the product, as well as the sponsor himself. Therefore, the sponsor has to take responsibility of this part of the training. Moreover, pay attention to the documentation of the training activities and ask for the training records, training logs, or certificates. If a sponsor decides that work should be carried out according to the sponsor's own SOP, a corresponding training course must also be carried out and documented as attendance training or as self-training. 
Some sponsors do this in an exemplary manner, others, on the other hand, do not understand how much money can be saved through proper training, standardized work, and good SOP knowledge of the monitors. Instead, they try to save at the wrong end. A monitor never stops learning throughout his career. There will always be new and interesting topics for him. So much about the selection and qualification of the monitors. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time. Goodbye.